do you eat pretty clean, but on occasion you do grab a protein bar when you're going long periods of time away from home or you can't get to a real food meal because you're traveling? Well, today I wanna to share about the top popular protein bars that I want you avoiding if you do eat protein bars and what types of bars to stock instead if you really wanna support your metabolism and continue to be eating clean even when it comes to bars. You're gonna to wanna to stay until the end because I'm covering a category of bars that deceptively are made of real food but are still on my avoid list. It might shock you a little bit, but I promise I'm gonna explain why so that you'll never be fooled again. At the end of this video, you're gonna be a pro at shopping for protein bars that support your metabolism and you'll be really savvy on reading ingredients and nutrition facts. Let's dive in. May Tom here. I am a registered dietitian and functional medicine practitioner. I love helping men and women over 40 look and feel really good by optimizing the metabolism, hormones, and health span. If you haven't already, definitely download my must-have food guide for boosting your metabolism down below. All right, so let's cut to the chase. The first category of protein bars that are very popular, found in almost every grocery store, are the following. Quest bars, pure protein bars, barbells bars, and zone bars. Now there's two parts of a food label that you wanna pay attention to. The macros, which is your nutrition facts, and also all the ingredients, which are usually in fine print. Now on the nutrition facts, these bars look fantastic. They're high in protein, they're low in sugar. What else could you ask for? Well, when you actually read the ingredients, all of these bars have artificial sweeteners. And I've included a list of them here. They're not looking like Splenda and Equal, like the packets that are so obvious on the table at a restaurant. They look like Acesulfan K, Sucralose, Aspartame, to name a few. And these are all considered artificial. They do mess with your gut microbiome, predispose you to things like diabetes, even though they don't spike your blood sugar. So we want to avoid these at all costs, especially if these are bars you eat all the time. Second, there are now a whole category of protein bars that look like desserts, but look really good on the nutrition facts. An example of this would be Legendary Foods protein pastries. They look like a Pop-Tart, but on the nutrition facts, they look really high in protein, really low in sugar. When you look at the ingredients though, that's what I would say we wanna avoid. We wanna avoid artificial sweeteners and artificial colors. This particular one, the strawberry flavored one, does have red as one of the artificial colors. So we wanna get that out of the diet at all costs. There's another category of protein bars. Again, they are on my avoid list because of more in the ingredients than it is the nutrition facts. And these are bars such as Think Thin Bars and Built Bars, to name a few. Now, what these bars have, again, nutrition facts look great, but in their ingredients, they all have sugar alcohols, whether that's maltitol, sorbitol, or even erythritol. Now, erythritol has been a question mark in our industry more recently because of research recently published this past year on possibly erythritol adding to cardiovascular risk by increasing clotting factors. This is preliminary data. It's not a for sure conclusion that we can execute on. But for now, again, if this is a bar you're stocking all the time, we don't necessarily want to be eating erythritol consistently. So out with these bars that have sugar alcohols, especially also if you have any gut issues or SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, these sugar alcohols can cause GI symptoms to be worse. A fourth category of very popular protein bars that I want you to avoid are bars that are soy protein based. And these would include brands such as Luna bars, Cliff bars. Now, not all Cliff bars are soy based, and there's definitely other brands that are soy based, but what we want to avoid is soy protein isolate. Now, you're seeing this in cereals, shakes, and bars. I love soy from a whole foods perspective, ideally non GMO and fermented, but when it comes to protein isolates, we have now stripped all the qualities of soy that make it beneficial for our health. So, I consider this a processed ingredient that I don't really want in a bar or any kind of snack in general. Now, the final category of popular protein bars that I want you to avoid might be surprising. These are real food bars that I consider like glorified trail mixes. This category of glorified trail mix bars would include brands such as Laura Bars, RX Bars, and Go Macro Bars. Now, I wanna break this down in more detail because a lot of people are shocked when they're like, but they're all real food ingredients. Why would you not endorse them? And let's take a look at each one of these 
in more detail to give you the idea behind why I'm making this recommendation. So let's look at the peanut butter chocolate go macro bar. Let's read the ingredients. Organic brown rice syrup, organic peanut butter, organic protein blend with a blend of sprouted brown rice protein and pea protein, organic chocolate chips, organic puffed rice, and organic peanuts. Sounds really harmless, right? Now let's look at the nutrition facts. That's where we're hitting some problems. 14 grams of sugar, 11 grams of protein, and 39 grams of carbs. Now, the reason why this is problematic is I'm looking for bars that generally have five grams or less of sugar. This one has a lot more. I'm looking at bars that also have at least 10 grams of protein. This does have that, but I don't want the proteins and the carbs to be way off. Ideally, a one to one ratio or a two to one ratio of carbs to protein is what would fit the bill for me. And I'm gonna explain why in a little bit, but you'll notice that this bar has way more carbs than protein. And and when it comes to total amount of carbs, if 15 grams of carbs is about a serving, I'd like to see snacks around one to two servings, two at the most. This bar definitely exceeds two servings of carbs, making it a very carb heavy snack. Let's look at the double chocolate peanut butter Lara bar. Again, seven ingredients, dates, peanuts, cashews, semi-sweet chocolate, unsweetened chocolate, salt, and vanilla. But let's look at the nutrition facts. 18 grams of sugar, four grams of protein, and overall 26 grams of carbs. Now, again, that's not fitting the bill if we're aiming for five and under. In fact, in general, we're trying to keep our total grams of sugar, especially coming from things like fructose, to under 24 grams a day. And again, if you're hitting 18 just out the gate with this bar, you're like two thirds of the way there with your total sugar intake for the day. This bar also doesn't have enough protein. It's only at four. It's not gonna keep you full as long. We're looking for 10 or more grams of protein for a strategic snack like a bar to hold you over to the next meal and stave off hunger. Lastly, let's look at the coconut chocolate RX bar. It has dates, egg white, almonds, chocolate, cashews, coconut, natural flavors, and salt. Not bad. Eight total ingredients that you can pronounce. What's wrong with that? However, let's look at the nutrition facts again. 14 grams of sugar, 12 grams of protein, and 23 grams of carbs. Now again, we really want the sugars not to exceed protein ever. And again, no more than two to one ratio of carbs to protein. Definitely this bar is a little bit high on the sugar and it's a little bit high on the carbs as well with a little bit more than two times as much carbs than protein. So to recap, why are these clean real food bars on my avoid list? Bars are made to hold you over until you can get to real food, ideally a real food meal. They're also strategic for staving off hunger so that you don't overeat at your next meal. And that means you want really high protein because protein keeps us fuller longer. The other thing is we don't want bars to disrupt our blood sugar. Normally bars are eaten alone. They're not in combination with all these other foods to balance them out. So we want that bar itself to be balanced, if that makes sense. The last thing you want a bar to do is to give you a sugar spike. And if you've watched my last video on five things that change when you turn 40, the one thing we wanna improve is insulin resistance by eating like a diabetic. So we don't want bars to be pushing the blood sugars in the wrong direction. Let me just recap the things I teach my clients in terms of how to look for a protein bar that fits the bill. Number one, I'm looking for five or less grams of total sugar. I don't even care about added, I just care about total because even if it was built Built into the fruit, fruit sugar is still sugar. Number two, I'm looking for something that has high enough protein and not too much carbs. So ideally 10 or more grams of protein in a bar and no more than two times as much carbs protein. So for instance, if a bar had 12 grams of protein, I'm looking for that bar to have 24 or less grams of carbohydrates. Number three, I do want to avoid artificial sweeteners, artificial colorings, artificial flavors, as well as soy protein and sugar alcohols. So with those requirements, let's dive into what made my list. And again, this is not exhaustive, but it's a great place to start. Now, there's a few companies out there that have done a good job. One of them is Atlas Bars. They are a whey-based protein bar that is grass-fed, which I like. Also, another one is ProMix protein bars, or they're called protein puff bars. And these all seem to also qualify based on both ingredients and nutrition facts. A third one that I really like is Designs for Health. They have a whole line of bars that are allulose sweetened, which is one of my favorite sugars right now, if you've watched my other videos. The only bar that they make that doesn't qualify with the high protein piece is their Cocoa Immune Bar. It's a little bit lower in protein. They're emphasizing other ingredients to support immunity. So that would be the one bar that doesn't fit. 
This bar is slightly higher in saturated fat for those of you that have to avoid saturated fat for cardiovascular genetic reasons. Again, not exceeding one bar a day, it could still fit into a healthy overall plan. Lastly, Aloha bars are pretty good and easy to find, reasonably priced, and do fit the bill in terms of having enough protein, not having any of those junky sweeteners or artificial colorings or sugar alcohols. One final one that does fit the bill are Magic Spoon Bars. They do make cereals as well. And on one of their cereals, I did notice a label that said includes a bioengineered food. I contacted the company. They got back to me right away. They said that that's only on like one flavor of their cereals because of the natural flavors ingredient that's in there, but none of their bars are affected by that. So again, they have a lot of fun flavors and have a really clean ingredients and nutrition facts macros. So there you have it, five bars that are clean, that do fit all those requirements I just mentioned, and there's probably more out there. And as consumers demand cleaner bars, more bars will be available. But now you know how to shop for one and how to identify the right ones, how to avoid the wrong ones. I hope you found this video super helpful. And if you did, please leave me a comment down below. Let me know if there's any other topics that really interest you that you want me to make you a video of. Until next time.